Hey guys, it's not a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> it's actually a crappy situation. Unfortunately, we were supposed to be out looking at properties today, but, uh, you know, when this particular thing goes wrong, it becomes top priority. So this is what I'm saying. That is our Tecma Macerating Toilet by Thetford. And this toilet has decided that it doesn't want to, uh, doesn't want to macerate. Okay, if you don't know what macerating is, that's when it, it grinds and mulches for those taco Tuesday nights, you know what I'm saying? So anyhow, uh, today's all about taking it apart, uh, finding out why it's not, uh, taking care of Mr. Hanky. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes things happen to where, uh, you get redirected. Today's one of them days. Poo! Yeah. <laughs> All right, time to get to it. You know how it works. Everything has uh, either the star square bits, and uh, this one X actually has the six point, and I don't know, it's probably five thirty seconds. And you know, when I first looked at this, I was looking at these things going. <laughs> What the hell kind of uh, connection is that? So these are basically, you know, like a porcelain. And you can see it's the uh, six-sided. You know, the bolts are about uh, two and a half inches, three inches long. I thought it was gonna be more to it than this, but you know what I'm saying? Let's take a look, see if this thing's just gonna slide out. Look at that. It's coming right on out. Right on, right on. Right on like Donkey Kong. Now, I'll show you here. Just slide this, this thing out like so. Now you can see right back in there. There we go, there's where all the fun's happening. That's where our issues are at. So, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug the power and uh, shut it off here a second so I can get my bearings and see exactly what's gotta happen here and I'll turn it back on. This is the back of the toilet here. Just wanna give you a reference point. Here's the toilet. Got it pulled away, there's the cabinet. And uh, what you can see here is, right here is your water uh, spray, which uh, basically sprays the inside of the bowl. Uh, then what you got here is this big, this big fat boy right here, goes down to the macerator pump. And then from the macerator pump, it comes up and runs. Let's see how I can film this. Comes up, up here, and then runs right out to the black water holding tank, okay? So what I'm gonna do, just to be, well, I'm gonna try to act like I'm working smarter than harder, is I'm going to disconnect right here just to see if there is a blockage right here at this section. If I'm lucky, there will be. Otherwise, I'm going in. I'm going into the, the pump zone. So let me check it out. Be right back. Took the main, uh, main off here. You know, it's right here. It just was a uh, hose clamp pulled right out uh, with minimal effort. 
and uh, obviously there's there's nothing down there's nothing down yonder nothing to even look at so now we got the wires and uh, you know I suppose I should have removed the power first you know just common sense which today I don't have much of so let me show you what we got going on here with the uh, Thetford Tecmo wiring system. Okay, this is your uh, your spray water pump. Let me move this out of the way. Spray water pump right here. It's the only thing that's not really color coded. So because it is a two wire, you know, black blue, just because I'm kind of anal about making sure that things go back the way that they're supposed to is uh, blue is on this side here. As you can see, I wrote blue. Okay, so I'm going to know to put it back that direction. All right, then over here, what we got. Here's your main power. Okay, pretty basic. Uh, black and red. Now, since this coach is uh, rather new and hasn't been messed with, all of the uh, labels are still on here. So we got the uh, full tank sensor here. Full tank sensor basically is uh, the shutdown to where if your tank fills up, you can't have an overflow, it'll stop your toilet from uh, flushing. So, and just to let you know, that is a potential issue that I'm going to address if I do not find a plug. So this full tank sensor here, And you've got mid tank sensor here, white and green. All right. And then main power. So everything's color coded, so you don't have to worry about screwing it up other than the uh, water sprayer pump. And I do believe I've seen one more in here somewhere. What do we got here? All right, we got black and brown. And it's going down into the control module. So we're gonna go ahead and just for funness among us, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect that to get them out of the way here. Oh, we got another one. Got the wall switch. Some of these get a little, a little tight, which is all right. All right, so we are completely disconnected from the wiring. Now, last thing that we got going on here is right here. We got the water line. I have to go out and shut the water off and uh, make sure we have no pressure. Otherwise, uh, it could be a shower. Let me go check that out. Be right. Got the water uh, disconnected now also. Kind of figure the easiest place to take it off was uh, since uh, even if there was pressure on the line uh, beyond the pump here, um, we weren't gonna have any any pressure, so I went ahead and just, and I just squeezed this with my fingers. And just pulled it down and disconnected it from right bar. So that was pretty easy peasy. So we got it turned around here now, and uh, now we're gonna start diving into this bad boy and see if we can find the issue. So let me get this thing set up on a tripod so I can work and we can fit it. What I'm gonna do here is Kind of set that up out of the way. Now that everything's disconnected, you can get the the module out of the way. Alrighty. So there we go. We are all ready to rock. Now, what we're looking at here is here's the main line right here. This this could be the the possible line in question. But this, you know, this isn't squeezing like there's 
any type of blockage in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, disconnect the motor, pull it out, then I'll be able to uh, plug it back in and run it uh, in my hands and make that happen. Then we're golden. Let me get her done. This is pretty much the next step, uh, you know, before I flipped it on the side. You know, I had to make sure that uh, there was going to be uh, no specialness, uh, you know, in the way of surprises anything. So, you know, we sprayed it down with sanitizer. Then we sanitized the outside. We sanitized the inside. I sprayed myself down with anti-sanitizer. I'm removing the pump from the bowl, uh, which is a half-inch uh, socket, half-inch close-in. Bada bing boom bam. So we'll get this removed here. And take note where these uh, where these grommets are. You know, I've got the video, so otherwise I'd take my cell phone and snap a picture of it that I could go back to. Seriously though. I wish that I had somebody who would have made this video so I wouldn't have to sit here and <laughs> make this video for people like you and me that want to see what we're in for. Now, you know what? It could have been just a loose wire connection, which, you know, I, I checked them all, but, you know, I didn't, after I pulled the toilet out, I didn't uh, try to run it with the toilet pulled out which could have been just a loose wire connection by what I'm reading online. But I'm just going for it. <laughs> I'm just taking the whole thing out here. Now, as you can see here, it's now free and, and ready to roll, other than the main line right here. Okay. take this apart I don't want to gross anybody out just in case there's something special okay guys that was special okay <laughs> so anyhow the last shot I said I was gonna you know take it apart well I took it apart and uh, just to let you know you know here is uh, here's part of the grinder motor right and as you can see here inside here you got cutter blades and what it does is it ends up uh, ends up spinning right spinning and it drags the specialness across these sharp blades chops it dice Martha Stewart would love it would be proud you know what I'm saying that's how good of a job it does so anyhow this was completely plugged and we had some friends over now i'm not going to say who but we do believe that by the little package that i ended up finding jammed in here you know the blades couldn't cut it up was a hand wipe which Julie and I use, you know, aloe and vitamin E hand wipes in the bathroom. And somebody decided to flush one. And that's the reason why they say only use RV toilet paper because it's designed to dissolve as soon as it hits moisture. And uh, hand wipes are designed to hold together. And it actually was stronger than the blades and plugged up the whole system. <clears throat> so just to let you guys know, what really happened was, it started out to where uh, after this guest left, uh, the toilet started acting up and it would flush, but then it would stay open longer than it normally would and sit there and just run the, uh, run the uh, motor and 
the water wasn't flowing. So we thought, all right, well, we'll keep an eye on it and see, you know, I'll make some calls because this is over a, over a weekend, so nobody to reach. And the next thing that happened was it all of a sudden stopped running the motor and uh, it became a fishbowl. One little tip for you guys. Once you experience a situation like this and the commode becomes inoperable, you're going to definitely want a backup plan. So if you're not out boondocking and uh, grabbing the toilet paper and hitting the shrubs, if you happen to be in a park and they don't have uh, facilities, take it from an off-gridder. It's what we do. We don't sell them. Well, you know, we might consider it now. Get yourself one of those five gallon bucket uh, toilet seats that you can put a bag in. Or, if you don't mind taking uh, little Cindy Yuhu and Johnny Boo Boo's pool noodle. And that way, you know what? You're not sitting there just suffering or hopping in the vehicle, heading to a gas station or a restaurant. So just a little tip. It's always good to have a backup, backup or a backup. Anyhow, I'm gonna put her back together and uh, I'll show you step-by-step step as I put it back just so that you uh, can reference. And we'll fire this bad boy up. You know, I can tell you that, uh, you know, taking things apart and putting them back together is, for some people, a little bit uh, concerning and uncomfortable, but just use technology. Use your phone, use your iPad, whatever. And, uh, you know, you can pretty much uh, film it, taking it apart and put it right back together. And uh, just makes things that much easier. Kind of reduces the stress too. And again, I wish this video would have been, uh, you know, out there. Now there is several videos, obviously, on this toilet, but nobody's actually getting in there and getting their hands uh, right in the middle of it all. You know what I'm saying? And that's really kind of a a big deal on some projects. So I got the uh, uh, the main pump hose that comes from the back of the bowl down to the pump, all sanitized and cleaned up. And you know, it's not a bad idea to have uh, you know like a good antibacterial spray on hand before you start this project because you know you're going to be spraying everything down. Okay, it's obviously if uh, you know recycled products uh, bothers you, you might want to call an RV repair guy to take care of this. But, you know, I've been into this for about an hour so far. And, uh, you know, again, you know, it's just a matter of getting in there and getting her done and, and uh, hope this video helps everybody. So this is the main line here. This goes to the pump. This goes to the back of the bowl. This is an airline. Uh, and just make sure that the, let's see if I can get it to show. Oh, how can I make this show? Okay, right in there. See that little white hole? Okay, just make sure those holes, there's one on each side that uh, is pretty much going to 
need to be dealt with. So anyhow, that goes right on up here like so. Big side, make sure you get it all the way on there. And I ended up scrubbing uh, the toilet really seriously because it had, uh, you know, years of funness on it. And we just push that on there like so. Just make sure it's on there nice and straight. Okay, that's on there that good. You know, you just wanna make sure that that clamp's really holding on. Last thing you want is to obviously put this thing back together and find that there's a leak. And this one's going to require the manual, the manual version, because it's up in there. Let me see if I can adjust the camera here so you can get a little bit better idea of what's going on. Okay, so again, here's where it's hooked to the pump. And let me just grab the camera here and show you. And then back over here is where it attaches to the bowl right here. So it comes down, attached to the pump, bowl, okay. Sorry for swinging the camera around like that. I wanted to give you a visual. Just make sure that that's on there nice and snug. Bang, almost looks brand new, don't it? All right, now all we have really left to do, oh, and also, if you haven't noticed, I just laid it inside my shower, just in case, uh, you know, we had any weird surprises, which we did. Okay, not to gross anybody out, but you know what? I turned on my, uh, my hot water and my shower, which cranks up to about 130 degrees, and I sanitize my shower, the, the, the bowl, everything, <laughs> done and over with. And obviously after we're done with all this, we're gonna get in there with uh, Mean Green, and uh, we're gonna hit everything. Very important that you do that, okay? Don't be messing around with these bugs. All right, so, all right, next step, let's take it back into the bathroom, set it into place, let's plug all the wires back in, let's uh, hook up the, the main line to the main drain to the black tank, we'll hit the button and maybe it'll work, we shall see. Okay, now that we got it all put back together, uh, pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to take the module and we're going to put it back in. Now, the module is normally stuck to the side of the toilet right in here. And uh, this one was actually off laying on the ground. And that's why it's got, you know, debris stuck to the original. So we had some double sticky 3M tape, uh, which I'm sure that... <laughs> Especially you full-time RVers probably have rolls of this around. Too bad you couldn't use a command hook. <laughs> That's kind of like an RV joke. Uh, anyhow, uh, this module here, pretty much with the new double sticky tape, I'm going to put it right on in there. <clears throat> and this 3M double sticky tape is really good. Almost as good as Gorilla Tape. 
I say that because I've had good luck with Gorilla Tape. So, that's stuck in there just like that. Here's all your connections. Okay, next shot. Let's hook up the water and the drain, reconnect the wires, give her a test. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the water line back on. Push it all the way on like so. Now this clamp here, some of you can squeeze it with your fingers and others will need to use pliers. Squeeze that on like so. Water line is complete. Next. Main drain. Make sure everything's nice and snug. Now, before I push it back in, oh, that's a nice sound. Now, I did have to reset the water level, and uh, on this particular model, you hold both buttons in until the water level fills just above the drain. And, uh, that will be your water level set. <laughs> yeah, very inviting, I must say. that buttoned up. Last thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to reseal the toilet. And I just went down to a hardware store, got uh, some silicone, flex shot, seal it around the bottom. We'll be done. Right, guys that's pretty much it you know now the videos out there for guys like you they were like yeah, I wish somebody did a video to just show how basic it is in order to get this uh, Tecma Thetford toilet working now if you go online you're gonna get all kinds of uh, information that could potentially help you loose wires uh, the the sensors inside of the uh, the black tank could be, you know, malfunctioning because they're dirty. You're not flushing your tank enough. Um, I did all the above, okay, before I decided to take it apart. Obviously, I told myself I was going to take it apart. I was gutting this thing, so I wasn't going to be messing around, you know, more than once. It's working like brand new now. It's that easy. It took me over an hour to do it, maybe closer to two hours due to the fact that, you know, when you start messing around with <laughs> the mess, then, you know, you have a tendency to slow down because uh, you don't want to be touching anything more than you have to. So, anyhow, there you go. Again, I'm not an RV repair guy. I don't claim to be. But, I am a guy that can turn a wrench and a screwdriver and, uh, you know what, hope this video helps somebody. God bless Texas, and God bless the USA. Peace.